that's all I've been through. London. Welcome to London, John. Welcome to London. Local time is 8 14 a.m. Please remain seated. Which is the bell fast your baggage stolen until the sea bell sign has been turned off. Paramount importance to us, so please give the following announcement your full attention. 
there are also emergency exits on either side of the vessel. The ship has a life jacket for everyone on board. They are adjustable to most sizes. We also have life jackets dedicated to large persons and small children. They are stored around the ship in chests with a life jacket symbol. We also have open inflatable life rafts. In an emergency, the crew would launch these or they can float free. Do not attempt to use them until instructed. Around the decks are a number of life buoys. Should anyone fall overboard, throw one in their direction and call man overboard as loud as possible. Very much just now, just with the very, very low water levels. Even in normal times, the river nests, no use for boats to sail up down or down anyways. Too fast flowing, too shallow, lots of rocks sticking out all over the place. Hence why they had to build another section of the man-made canal here. The front of it faces the direction we're travelling in, so it's even larger than it appears from here. And we've got the well-kept gardens up ahead as well, with trees and plants from all around the world. So say Loch, L-O-C-H, Loch, Gaelic word for uh, so, uh, Gaelic, very ancient language, that's the other language on the road signs. Uh, a lot of lochs are still in the Gaelic name, some of the, a lot of the hills uh, and whatnot. Uh, so there's over 30,000 lochs in the country. Uh, we come in second place for certain categories. In terms of depth, uh, we've cruised in from the northeast end of the loch, so it's a lot shallower. But we will cover the deepest section this morning uh, down in the Urquhart's Castle area. Its deepest point officially 750 feet deep. That's about 230 meters, and that's deeper than the majority of the North Sea. However, only the second deepest loch in the country is Loch Marar, M O R A R. It's over a thousand foot deep, about 330 meters. Morag, I think, nice, lovely, friendly person. That's what I think when I hear the word Morag. A month, that's absolutely ridiculous. And in fairness, at one point, back in the 1930s, it, the Daily Mail tried to get the Loch Ness Monster known as Bobby. Ah. Luckily, that never stuck. So Loch Ness Monster, Nessie. So there we go. So a uh, Loch Ness singly for length, depth, surface area. Multiply those factors together though, puts us into first place by a mind-boggling absurd amount. And that's in terms of the amount of water that it holds in here. Okay. Now, I'm from Inverness, okay? Um, the Invernesian accent, we tend not to pronounce the letter T in the middle of words. So I'll, I'll really try for you, so you understand me. So there's 7.5 billion cubic meters of water in the loch. How do you guys do that all the time? Scotland for thousands of years, stories have been passed down to the generations, which revolve around water kelpies, as they're called kelpies, water horses, water spirits, water monsters, whatever you prefer. Uh, the first written recorded sighting back in 565 AD uh, revolves around a man called Saint Columba. Uh, I don't know how good a saint he was. Uh, he was chucked out of Ireland for accidentally starting a war between two villages. As you, uh, So he was chucked out of Ireland, banished to Scotland uh, to redeem himself, try to get as many people to convert to Christianity along the way. So he's heading up to Inverness, where all the heathens were apparently, passing the Loch Ness area, and there's a burial ritual taking place. He was a curious character, so he struck up a conversation with the locals. They were basing that their friend had been eaten by a monster living in the water. I think Columba pondered his He saw himself as a 
powerful man that can perform magic and miracles, so he wanted to be the person to tame the beast of Loch Ness. So, to meet it face to face, he got his servant to roll him out in a boat into the middle of the water. He then nudged his servant over the side to use him as bait. So I guess he was swimming around in the cold waters of Loch Ness, screaming in a high-pitched voice, probably. All this commotion attracted the monster, was seconds away from biting the serpent head off uh, until St. Columba turned into... Well, how I imagine it, he's he turned into Gandalf from the Lord of the Rings with a staff. Thou shalt not pass. Monster back down, swam away. Again, just like a man called Hamish naming all the locks in Scotland, St. Columba turning into Gandalf from Lord of the Rings, maybe not historic, historically accurate. It's just painting an image in your head. Something in here, all I'm doing. Anyway, whatever he did, monster back down, swam up. Uh, no recordings of anyone being eaten by the monster since the 6th century. We will say there's some caves under the castle, uh, under the castle there, so that's where it goes to hide from all the press and media intrusion. So I'll tell you about the history of the castle in a second. Well, now we've turned right very close up to the ruins of Urquhart Castle. Uh, so very extended view of the castle from the water here. So before there was a castle here, this was possibly the location for settlement since all the way back to the 6th century when the Picts live in the area, P-I-C-T, the Picts. So their settlement sets up to the left hand side where the white flagpole stands and the Scottish flag now flies, uh, the St Andrew's Cross. And what St Andrew was crossing at me about, I'm still not entirely sure. But never mind. Uh, the first archaeological evidence of a castle, not until the 11th century. Uh, um, written records not until the mid 13th century then towards the end of the 13th start the 14th century is caught up in the wars of independence between the scots and the english uh, changing hands back and forward numerous times less than an hour to explore this place 30 minutes 30, 30 minutes it's already what time is it today uh, now yeah. it's five o'clock almost five almost five and we're closing at 5 30. What's, what's the one that closes at six yeah the visitor center the gift shop visitor center So the Scottish Lord who built this castle picked a really good spot. It's a very beautiful view of Loch Ness. How much is the cost of the ticket to get in, John? I paid 29 something for both of us. Okay, 29 for the two of us. This must be a moat, Jen. Mm -hmm. There must be, maybe there's water here before, I don't know. Yeah. It's probably a moat. The 
first castle I've been to. And it's, and it's a ruin. It's not even a full castle. It's part of a castle. It's a ruin. So welcome to Wurthart Castle in Inverness, Scotland. Let's check out the main parts of the castle first, John. I think there's a very nice view there at the top. We go there first or we go here? Okay, let's check out the interior. Because that's probably the the ones they'll close first. So we'll check out the uh, exterior areas after. <laughs> Work hard, Castle. That is how it's pronounced. Work hard. There's something there, Jen. I don't think you can get in through. No. This is where you put your. Ah, so those are battlements. Fire at the enemy. Yeah. With your whatever they use at the time, with the arrows, bows and arrows. There it is, uh, Loch Ness. Too bad we can't fly our drone. Yeah, I think. Do you want to go here first? Okay, let's let's check out this side first. Another nice view of the of the uh, lake. Mm -hmm. I don't think I want to go there. Oh, So there is Jemma negotiating the very narrow staircase heading up the tower and she made it.
probably check out the, the tower on the other side too, before I throw my batteries run up. I don't know if you still want to go. Yeah, we'll, we'll just take these stairs. We'll not take the uh, narrow winding staircase anymore. I don't think these wooden staircases is in the original gym. No. This is probably added in. No. <laughs> We're now on our way up the other tower, the other side of the castle. And there's Gemma trying to get a good exercise from all these staircase climbing. And we made it. We made it to the top. That was the flag that we were looking at earlier from from below. And this is the view from from the top of the castle. Again, very beautiful view of the lake and surrounding area. You're on candid camera. <laughs> There you go, White Castle.